Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, we've added in our little uh, villager character here for us to walk around with, um, but we want to do some more things with him. We want him to actually be able to interact with the player. So that's why we're going to add uh, a simple little kind of dialogue system for our, uh, our little villager guy here to use in the game. So, in this, this is this is going to take a few episodes to set up nicely so it actually works properly. But in the first this first episode, we're going to get the basis of it just kind of essentially down and working for us. So we're obviously going to need to create our dialog box. So I'm just going to zoom out so we can see our canvas here, and then in the canvas, we're going to highlight the canvas and just create an empty object as a child of that, and we'll call this our dialog manager because this is what we're going to use to control. Uh, what dialogue is shown. So then we need a place to actually show this stuff. So we're going to right click on our dialogue manager, go to UI, and we're going to first of all add an image because we're going to want this to be obviously, uh, we want to have a little background for our, our text to show up in. So we'll add a little, we'll change the color to be black like this. And I'm just going to move it down to the bottom here, make it a little bit wider like this. And then the next thing we need to do is add some text onto this. So we're going to go again. Uh, we're actually going to, before we do that, we're going to rename this to be our dialog box, like that, because this is what we're going to use to hold our dialog in. And as a child of this, we're going to add our text. And this is where we're going to be able to see whatever we make our villager say. So at the moment, we'll just leave that as saying the new text. That doesn't matter. We're going to change that. And then we're going to color here. We're going to make it a nice bright white so that we can see it properly. So when we go back to game view, we can see it nicely there. Uh, and we're just going to adjust the size of this so that it kind of goes roughly to the edges like this. Um, but we're not going to drag it all the way down to the bottom here. We're going to leave a little gap at the bottom. And that's for us to put an extra instruction to our players. And to do that, we're just going to go right click on our dialog box again and go to UI and then text. And this time we're going to change what this text says, and we'll just have it say, press space to continue. So we have a little instruction that we're telling our players. You can see uh, by default our U and our E gets cut off there. So we just drag the box to make it a little bit bigger. Scroll down again. We'll make it a nice bright white so the player can see. And then we're just going to pop this down in the bottom right corner here. So now when it's shown on screen, the player knows that they can press space to what we'll make it do is just close our dialog box as soon as it's on the screen. Okay, so now we've got the basic setup of it here. So let's go ahead and create a script to be able to control it. So what we're going to do is go into our scripts folder. I'm going to right click and create a C sharp script. And we'll call this one our dialog manager. And then we'll open this up in mono develop. And basically what we're going to do is, once it's open here, what we're going to do is we need to make, in our, in our dialog manager script here, we're going to attach this to our dialog manager object, obviously, having the same names kind of makes sense. Uh, we want to know uh, what our dialog box here is so that we can turn that on and off. And we want to know what the text is so that we'll be able to make changes to it uh, based on um, whatever text we want to show. So let's make it cut those couple of references here. So we're going to add a public uh, game object that we'll call dbox for dialog box. And we're going to add a public. We want to add a public text, but as we've encountered when dealing with uh, UI stuff in Unity before, that's not built into it by default. So we have to remember to go up the top up here and use using Unity Engine dot UI so that we're using the UI components of Unity that we're able to affect that in our script. So if we just get rid of text there again, type it in, we can now see we have a shortcut for text right here. So we're able to access the text and we'll call this uh, just dText, just to keep it nice and simple for dialog text. So let's just save this and we'll hook all this stuff up back in our inside of Unity here. So just wait that to save for a second and go to our dialog manager. We're going to add that script on here. Once it finishes compiling down the bottom, there we go. So our dialog 
manager we're going to add that in there and then we're going to drag our dialog box into the dbox slot and our dialog text which is the first one we created into our d text slot okay so what's going to happen when our player is playing the game well if we go back in here if our dialog box is active then we know that we want to use press and space to uh, deactivate the box so I, actually we should be doing this in our update loop here so we'll use an extra variable that we're going to use to keep track of whether the dialog box should be active at any particular moment um, that we will call uh, just public bool dialog active and so assuming that we have the dialog box open in our update loop here we're going to say if uh, dialog active so we don't have to say is equals true because if dialog active because of this bool um, if dialog active is true it's just checking that by itself and the other thing we want to check is if our player presses the space button so we'll say if dialog active and input dot get key down and then inside the bracket we'll say key code dot space so just like we did for um, when we were attacking with our character we did keycode.j this time we're doing keycode.space to get the space bar here so we'll put our close brackets there and then open our curly brackets here and then within this all we want to do is say okay if our dialog box is active then we should say dbox dot set active to be false so what we're doing is deactivating the box so if we save this now we'll be able to see this in action if we go back in here let it compile again in the corner and once that there we go finish compiling sometimes it takes a little while um, but we'll hit play and we have our, our dialog box active by default huh, weird I don't know why hmm why is it deactivating that doesn't make any sense Oh, for some reason I put a semicolon at the end of the line here. That was an odd thing to do. That was why we got that little bit of error. So if we go back in here, we should, that should fix that up. Okay, once that compiles this time, we also want to remember that just because we're we're only testing at the moment, um, our dialog box is active, but our dialog active value isn't active. So we're just going to turn that to be true for the moment. By default, we'll have that be false, obviously, because when we're starting the game, we don't want this text box actually to be able to be seen. So now... When we hit space there we go it deactivates the box just like that so what we'll also want to do of course is within this we want to make sure that we're setting our dialog active is equal to false like that okay so how are we going to actually make some changes to our text well basically we're just going to use a new public function that will be able to call from other places to be able to um change whatever text we have so what we'll do is we'll say public void show box so that's going to be our new function and normally when we make these new functions we obviously do our little two brackets like that and then our two curly brackets but what we want to be able to do is actually send some text to this so if we have another object that wants to say something what we'll do is send the text that we want to say and we'll use show box here to read it so what we're going to take in inside these brackets is a string that we're just going to call dialogue like that okay so what we'll do is obviously if we want to show the box we need to say that our dialog active should be equal to true and that our d box we should say dot set active is true so we're activating the d box and then finally we're going to set that the text that we're shown is what we're passing in here so we will say our, on our d text the text part of that uh, dot uh, yeah, dtext.text .text should be equal to whatever dialog string we're sending in here so we're going to save this now obviously we can't just test this out we need something to actually send the text to it so to do that we're going to set up uh, another little script here so we're going to go back into the game go back into our scene view and we'll zoom back in here and what we're basically going to do how we're going to make it work is we're going to use our little villager here as an example we're going to add a little box below our villager to use or actually we could make quite a big box and put it anywhere around the villager really um, and we're going to make it so that when the player walks into this zone and presses space then it will start talking to the player to the villager 
So let's just do that first. So on our villager, we're going to create a new empty that we'll call um, dialog zone. And then we're going to add a box collider 2D to that. We're going to make sure it's a trigger. And then what we're going to do is just make it a little bit bigger than this player or than the, the villager. So we got a nice little bit of area around them like that. And then we're going to create a new script to uh, actually do our text. So we're going to create a new C sharp script that we're going to call dialog holder. And we're going to obviously open this up in Mono Develop as well. And this is going to be another very short script for the moment. As I said, this first uh, like kind of introduction to this dialog stuff is just kind of setting up the basics of what we're doing here. So at the moment, we're just going to have uh, a public string called dialog. So this will just be whatever text we want our villager to say when the player talks to him. Uh, and then we need, obviously, to have a reference to our manager itself, because we want to use, on our dialog manager, we want to use the show box. Uh, function down here. So we we're going to add a private dialog manager that will just call dman just to be nice and simple. So in our start function we need to find what the D the dialog manager is. So we'll do dman is equal to find object of type dialog manager because obviously anytime we go into a new scene or anything like that we always want to have the dialog manager as a kind of default object within our world, much like we always want to have our uh, HP sliders and all this. We want to have all that be a default thing. We want our dialog boxes to always be available as well. So when we load a new character, or if we have like hundreds of villagers walking around or anything, we don't want to have to go and uh, assign uh, the dialog box to each one of them. So that's why we're just making it automatically find the dialog uh, manager at the very start. So we're not actually going to do anything in our update loop. What we're going to do is add a void on trigger enter 2D uh, and we'll say collider 2D that we'll call other, much like we've done for other stuff in the past as well. We're just checking to make sure if the player is in here. So as usual, we go if the other dot tag, or sorry, not the tag, the other dot game object dot name, because we're getting the name. And we want to check is the name of the object that just walked into the trigger zone uh, is that the player and if it is we want to say okay if that's true then we'll say if input dot get key down key code dot space as we did before we're just getting the the input from the keyboard and we don't want to put that semicolon at the end as we almost just did again. But we're checking to see if our input, if our player presses the space bar down. And if they do, we want to load the dialog box up. So we'll go into our dialog manager and we'll say show box. And the text that we want to pass in is our dialog up here that we're going to type in in a minute. So we'll say our dialog like that. And then we'll hit our semicolon and we'll save that. And we'll go back into Unity and let that compile. And obviously we're going to add this script onto our dialog zone here. So we'll just let it compile there for a second. Should be almost done. And then we'll go add our dialog holder here. So the dialog, we'll just have this villager say is just nice and simple. Hey there. So let's go back up here. So we obviously don't want our dialog box showing up at the start. So I'm going to have that be deactivated by default. We're going to disable that again because we don't actually want that starting off as true. So now we'll go in here. We'll hit play. And what we should get is when we walk into the villager, we'll get our dialog box. Oh, no, he ran away. Why isn't that? Okay, so we were having a bit of an issue there, and I just realized what it was. is because we used on trigger enter 2D here, which is the, the wrong thing uh, we wanted to use. We should actually use on trigger stay. And the reason for that is on trigger enter only occurs at the very moment that the player walks into a, a trigger box, or any, any box collider enters another trigger zone. Um, and the reason 
we want to use on trigger stay is because that is every moment that a box stays inside of a trigger zone. So rather than only us trying to get the space button pressed down at the exact moment we happen to walk into our trigger zone, what we actually want to do is be within this zone active and then we press the space button down and our player can actually uh, realize what's going on. So I need to actually save that, I suppose. Go back in here, let this compile for a second and we'll hit the play button and we should see now that our dialog box will pop up into the world for us. So once that compiles, so we'll walk down to our guy here and oh, I've actually forgot to press the button. If we hit space, nothing will actually happen straight away. And it's because of how the order of uh, some stuff that we're doing here. But what we will see if we actually manually go and activate our dialog box here. Oh, uh, that didn't do it properly there for some reason. There we go. So I activate, I mustn't have pressed spare to, space at the right time. But uh, if we activate our dialog box, we see that our text is being sent, but our box isn't being activated. Um, which obviously we would expect it, there's no reason for. There's not, no apparent reason for that to happen. So if we go back in here, we see that our dialog box is being uh, activated just the way we want it to be. But what's happening is because um, we're doing this when the key is pressed down here, it very quickly goes to this update loop here. And because we're using get key down, it actually deactivates the, uh, the dialog box as soon as it's activated. So way, one very simple way we can fix that is back in our dialog holder. Instead of using get key down, we'll use get key up and we'll save this. And what that will do is that will only check when our player releases the space bar button, which is actually a more normal way of how you want to activate things on button presses. You don't normally don't want to activate it when the button is first pressed down because you may want to have, say, a meter that charges up. And if you press the button down, that will start a charge and then when you press it up, then it will um, activate whatever magic you have or whatever. So you kind of want to get into the habit sometimes of using uh, our get key up uh, to activate buttons and stuff like that. So now we'll see and when we hit play here, we walk down to this guy, we got our space box. Just the way we want it to be all working nicely and perfect in our world. Of course, we're able to walk around here at the moment. That's something we're going to obviously fix up as we go further on. But for the moment, we have the basics of our dialog box active in the world. Of course, all it can do is show one line of text. So we're going to want to give it the ability to show multiple lines um, of dialog and kind of step through each line as we go. So that's what we're going to take a look at in the next episode. Thanks for watching. and I'll see you all very soon.